under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I don't know. I don't one yet. Thank you. Tonight we begin the meeting by the reorganization of the school committee. So at this time, I would be asking the committee to make nominations for chair of the committee. I'd like to nominate Mike Flaherty. Okay. Mr. Flaherty has been nominated. Do I have another nomination? I'd like to nominate Joyce. Okay, Mrs. Bakiaki has been nominated. Do I have any other? All right. So all in favor of Mr. Flaherty, please signify by raising your hand. All right, Mrs. Bakiaki. All right, Mr. Flaherty is the chair. So we now need to switch. Thank you very much. Um, uh, ne next, uh, next is the uh, need nominations for a vice chair. I'd like to nominate April Rossi. Any other nominations for vice chair? I'd like to nominate Joyce. Okay, no other nominations. Um, all those in favor of April Rossi as vice chair? That's three. Um, three? Um, for Ms. Bakiaki as vice chair? Two? And for secretary, any nominations? I'd like to nominate Joyce. Okay. Any other nominations for secretary? Uh, uh, vote for Ms. Bakiaki for secretary. Looks like five. Okay, moving on, we have uh, public comment. Oh, well, hold on, <laughs> sorry, Ms. Ms. Ruiz made, um, clarified that we, we need to announce that it is being recorded on WCTV. Uh, she's making an audio copy as well. If anyone else is making a co an audio copy, please notify the chair. Um, pu public comment, does anyone have anything they'd like to say before the committee? Okay. Good news, anybody? Yes. We, um, I'd like to welcome April to our committee. Yeah. She's a new vision and new voice. <laughs> I do actually have a list because we missed a meeting, so it's been a month since our last meeting, so forgive me for my list. Um, I'd also like to welcome April and congratulate you, Mike, on being chair. Thank you. Um, so there's been a lot going on in schools that I've been thankful to be able to be at some of them. Um, International Night was really well attended. That was my first time going. It was, it was really fun. The middle school play, I turned to the person next to me after it was over, I was speechless. I was, the performances were awesome, the smiles on the kids' faces, and my favorite part is that it's not just the kids who act in the play, it's everyone has a, has a part in it, everyone helps, it, it's, it's just really awesome. I'm so glad I got to be there. Um, and as you know, I always talk about the community partnerships with the schools, um, so a few weeks ago we had the Credit for Life Fair at the high school that I was lucky enough to be at. Um, lots of, uh, Cape Cod Five always does a great job, is always great to our schools. Um, they brought us that event. Uh, and also, uh, there was the home <coughs> fair that same week. There was a career fair. So there's been a lot of um, connection with our community over the last month or so, and it's really great to see. You see some of the same faces. Um, Wareham Ford is always there at all of our events. Jeff Worrell, but I don't want to leave anyone else, so I won't, I won't say any more names. But there's just so, so many um, people in the community who really um, reach out to the school, and it's really great. Um, fifth grade orientation last night. I had a fourth grade parent tell me today, not only was it great for the fourth graders, and they really felt like they got to see the school, and it was set up really well, but that she had some, a few questions at the end that she asked of seventh graders. And let's be honest, you never know what a seventh grader is going to say. 
Um, and she said that they did a really great job answering all of her questions. So all around, it sounded like a really great event. Um, and the other day, I got to help out at one of my favorite things, um, the Unified Track Meet. Um, Unified Sports is part of Special Olympics, and they have a team at the high school. And it's just one of, if you ever have an opportunity to attend, it's just a really, really great event. Um, and I'm really proud that we get to offer that at our high school. I think that's the end. Thank you. Dr. Schwann? Yes, I just attended the middle school concert, the spring concert, and um, it was an amazing event. I always get a bit choked up to see the growth from the winter concert to the spring concert. The band was fantastic. They played two three-minute numbers. Uh, the chorus sang four songs. One was a rap song from the musical Hamilton, which was pretty incredible. They um, are high-spirited, meticulous. They played different parts. It's very difficult. And the music, I just want to, I can't say enough about our music teacher at the middle school. She is unbelievably energetic and absolutely loves the kids, and they know it. So it, it, overall, it's just a fantastic experience. Um, and you will want to change your name plates. Yes. Dr. Shea Hood. OK, thank you. I have Earth Day is April 22nd, 2019. And Shaw's approached our elementaries and asked them to please decorate some of the grocery bags that they will be stuffing groceries in on the 22nd. So I happen to have some from Dicas, and I know Minot has also been doing this as well. So I would urge everyone to go and on Earth Day and pick up a decorated <coughs> grocery bag. Awesome. Also, I have I'm proud to announce that Ryan McSherry uh, was one of the winners of the 2019 NIAAA Scholarship Essay Award winner. She now will represent Section 1 in the uh, Massachusetts pool. So congratulations to Ryan. On May 9th, there's a seminar series that will, it will kick off the seminar series for college and career readiness for our alternative PASS school. And on May 9th, the College Focus, Bristol Community College will be here. They'll be talking with our students and interested um, people about admissions, online learning, dual enrollment. And then on May 16th, May 23rd, and May 30th, there'll be other opportunities. And if you'll look for the, um, a little flyer like this, it will tell you what's going to be happening. Sure. Really? All right. um, I, I just um, also want to thank Ms. Bakayoki for her time on the, uh, as chair and commend her for the really good work she's done. She, I mean, I, know, I always knew that she was very involved, but I, now I know she's even more involved than I thought, just everywhere she can be. Um, and uh, I think that I, you know, every time I've asked for something to be on the agenda, she's put it on, and I appreciate that. And thank you for stepping up to still be secretary. Thank you, I appreciate it, Mike. All right, um, report of the student representative. Hello, um, the, we recently had a high school lip dub, which went very well, so please check it out on Wareham On Demand. And um, the, this past weekend, the high school's key club brought home many awards, including first place in the essay contest, won by Wareham High School freshman Bridget Irving. That was at DECON in Springfield. Minutes of the meeting for March 14th. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Any, no, second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Abstain, I wasn't a member. Okay. Next item is Student Ambassadors Minot Forest School.
sound good? Perfect. Um, first of all, thank you for having us. We're very excited about what's going on at Minet. We're always looking for ways to give our students more voice. Um, I happened upon an article one night when I was reading online at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> from Mockingbird Elementary School in Iowa. It's a three through seven school, I believe, <coughs> three through six. And they do this same thing. They have kids that um, apply for job roles and um, have to go through an application process, a vetting process, training, and they have a big part of the success of their school. So we needed this at Minot. Uh, there are 18 Minot ambassadors currently. There were over 100 applications. So we are hiring. <laughs> we have four job roles. We have a respectful hallway greeter role, and there are several students in that position currently. We have responsible lunch monitors. There's a uh, group of students in each lunch. We have kind recess helpers. We have two currently, and we have four recesses, I believe. So there were no students from the other two recesses that applied, so I'm actively recruiting at this time. Um, they are responsible for checking out everybody, making sure everyone has a friend, and also sweeping the playground as everyone comes in to make sure no coats and mittens and playground equipment gets left behind. And we have a group of students who are our respectful, responsible, and kind lost and found supervisors. They make sure that the lost and found stays orderly. They try to connect kids back to their items. They recently came up with the idea of having a lost and found board where kids could pin up, hey, I lost my purple sweater. If you find one, it belongs to me. So we're working on putting that together for them. They did have to apply. They took the job applications very seriously. They were asked why they thought they would be good for the position and what their strengths were. They also had to get two teacher recommendations saying that they were the right person for the job. There was an application deadline with all applications submitted to Mrs. Siemens right before February vacation, and then Mrs. Siemens, Mrs. Murphy, and myself scoured through the applications to try and select the students. Um, I just put a link here with the resource to that original article I read, and this PowerPoint is on the Mine at Facebook page currently, and will be put on the Wareham website shortly. I have my students here who are anxious to tell you about their jobs if you'd like to hear about it. They, they have been prepped for any question you can throw at them. <laughs> and I just want to tell you their names and introduce them. But before that, I have Ms. Gillis here who works with us also because we tied this in with our PBIS, Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports Program framework that we run at Minot um, so that the student ambassadors can also put forth good examples of being um, responsible, respectful, and kind. So she's going to tell you briefly about that piece. I can use this one. Hi, hello. So PBIS is Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. It's a framework that we've implied, uh, applied to Mine at Forest. It's not a boxed uh, curriculum. It's not something that, you know, there's no lesson plan that are given to you. You have to make them on your own. And it is creating a safe, a comfortable, a respectful learning environment where the kids can come to school and feel ready to learn. And uh, we create expectations that the students follow. And we reward following expectations. And that's how the kids can feel comfortable and you know, adapt to those rules and feel safe to learn. So something that we've really thought has been important with 
the MINA ambassadors is having them kind of use the same language that our teachers have been taught to use through PBIS. So for example, if a teacher sees someone respectfully standing in the hallway, the teacher would give a leaf and say, thank you so much for being respectful in the hall. So the same applies for our ambassadors. If Antonia sees someone walking in the hall on the way to parent pickup, he would hand them a leaf and say, thank you for walking in the hall. Or thank you for holding your tray with both hands in the lunch line and walking respectfully. So um, at Minot, our three words for PBIS are respect, responsible, and kindness. We greet every day on that on the buses as they come in. We say it in our pledge, and we're trying to now push that out to the kids and having them say it to each other. So, yep. Would you guys like to introduce yourself so you can practice with the mic? Got it, Antonia? Start right here. Hi, my name is Aliana Kennedy. Hello, my name is Antonia Salib. Hello, my name is Mackenzie Gromblom. Hi, my name is Marissa Prentice. Hi, hi, my name is Avery Pohl. Hi, my name is Isabella Kukunski. Hi, my name is Morgan Aguilar. So they are ready for any questions that you may have for them. These kids have thought it out thoroughly. Well, welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Um, anyone have any questions for these guys? Sure. I'll put that later oh, on. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So, of the the jobs that when you guys had to write your reasons for wanting to be ambassadors, what was your number one reason for wanting to be a good example for your fellow students? Uh. I wanted to um, help people if they lost something that they really uh, wanted. That um, that was really um, that they that um, something they really liked. Yeah, <laughs> That's especially a really nice them. reason to want to help your friends. I just like to help people out and help people be respectful, responsible, and kind. That's a really really great reason. Thank you. I have a question. Do you ever switch jobs, or you always have the same job? Me and the person that I that helps me, we both have our jobs, and we both have certain ones recess groups that we work with. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Does anyone want to tell me about what they what you do every day when you're doing your job? Go ahead. I had to watch people who are following the rules, being respectful, being respectful, responsible, and kind, and I will give um, a leave to them if they're respectful, responsible, and kind. In which job is yours? <coughs> Lunch monitor. Okay. What do you do? I have to look out for people that are walking nicely, and if they are doing a good job or helping people out, I give them a leave. <coughs> And if they're like running and stuff, I try to stop them running so they don't fall or anything. Go ahead. Uh, I zip, um, I zip up coats and um, I look for names on stuff so I can give it back to the people who lost it. That's great. Anyone else? Yeah. I. Do the lost and found, and I organize lost and found, and um, try to see if anyone like lost something and they need it back. And if I um, see something that's at the lost and found that I might know who it belongs to, I try to um, see if I can give it back to them. Go ahead, sweet. I'm the recess person, and my job is to make sure there's no conflict going around and <coughs> make sure that there's, like, no one leaves their water bottle or jackets outside. Anyone in the back? Mm -hmm. I'm a lunch monitor, and, and what I try to do is to make sure people aren't, like, flipping their water bottles or um, messing around with their food and that kind of stuff. I'm a hall monitor 
and I make sure kids don't yell or run in the halls. Well, thank you guys for doing such important jobs, and thanks for coming tonight to share it with us. And thank you to Mr. Filippo and Ms. Gillis and anyone who's, who's brought this. It's really great. Are they all fourth graders? Third and fourth. Third and fourth. Okay. Very good. Can I ask what the leaf represents and what do you guys do once you once the leaves have been handed out, where do they end up? Um, Thank you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> if you see somebody being respectful, responsible, and kind, you give them a leaf and then um, they take this leaf to their class and every Friday we have a leaf raffle and uh, we so they put how much leaves they have in like a bucket the teachers do and then somebody picks out the somebody picks out um whoever has the most leaves gets extra recess for their oh, class that sounds like a really good reward for being a good kid and i like it thank you yeah thank you very much Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming to our meeting. Thank you so much, honey. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Nice. Anyway, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks for you. coming today. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Does this mean we all get extra recess? Oh, we get to go home early. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, great job on the Pledge of Allegiance, too, guys. That was awesome. Yeah, it, it was like, yeah, it really was. Um, acceptance of gifts. Oh, yeah, ambassadors are free to go, yeah. Uh, acceptance of gifts. Okay, thank you. I would like to recommend the acceptance of the following gifts. $125 from the Sylvia family to the Stage Backpack Program. $125 from Kaleidoscope to the Stage Backpack Program. $1,000 from Cape Cod 5 to the Wareham High School for Credit for Life. Canned goods and gift cards valued at $350 from the Minot Middle Hat Day to the Stage Backpack Program. $150 from the Raymond family raised through a raffle to Mrs. Bakeman's class at Deca School. $300 from Wesley United Church to the Stage Backpack Program a donation of non-perishable and canned goods from Sharon Boyer to the ba Stage Backpack Program, and $100 from the family of Santa Barbara to the Mrs. Allen's first gr grade class. So I would recommend that the committee accept all those gifts. Do I have a motion to approve? <coughs> a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, thank you very much to everybody who gave. I, I'm just always so humbled whenever I see a list like that. And I was actually pretty moved by the um, the one here from Mrs. Bakeman regarding her the raffle, the impromptu raffle she did mm -hmm. during the tournament at her husband's hobby store. That's great. Do you know what the name of the hobby store is? No, I don't. Uh, okay. All right, uh, next on the uh, agenda is vote to be a school choice district for the 2019 to 2020 school year. Yes, um, every year the school committee needs to vote to be a district that will accept school choice students. This does not mean that we could, if you would choose not to vote to accept it, that doesn't keep students in. All it does is it allows us to accept school choice students. We have a cap on grades, so we would not exceed class sizes to accept school choice students. So I would recommend that the committee would vote to be a district that would accept school choice students. 
Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Right. Second? Second. Any discussion? Um, I would one, one question. Do you happen to know offhand how many school choice students we have now? No, but we're going to be doing a report for you. Okay. All right, thank we'll you. We'll talk about both. All right, thank you. I have another question as well. I know that with class size being the concern for the caps, are the caps something that we will publicize? I know that other districts that accept will say I have XYZ number of spaces available in the school that they to attract other people to their district. Is that something that we would be looking to do as well to offer that information? Sure. Okay. Any, anyone else? Just um, so this is for for all of our schools, right? Mm -hmm. Elementary, you know, minor, Deacus, middle, and high. Yes. And uh, in the junior senior co-op, is is that included too, or? Um, yes, it is, and students have to fill out the same kind of school choice forms okay. to come to us. Okay. I just know in the past when we had the academy, we would exempt that it was tuition based, mm -hmm. you know. So, all right. So, um. Uh, uh, we have a motion to approve and a second. Uh, all, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, five, zero, zero. Uh, vote to declare obsolete surplus library books, Wareham High School. Yes, Mr. Palladino has submitted a list of 500 outdated l books from the library. He would like to have them declared as surplus and then obsolete. Once that happens, if it happens, what we would do is we would look for a home for the books to give away. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? I just have a question. Do we know, are the books, are they textbooks? Are they title books that could be donated to the library of, you know, for the book sale for the friends of the library to help um, for like some sort of community partnership or are they really worn tattered kind of on the threadbare side and really unable to be used or is that it's a collection of all uh, yes it's a collection of 500 books they're outdated psychology health computer science social science law and biology so textbooks okay thank you um, any further discussion okay all those in favor please say aye Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Passes 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, vote on collective bargaining agreement for custodians. This year, two members of the school committee and myself, we met with the custodial group. We, bar we bargained um, the terms of the contract. The custodial Association has accepted the terms of the agreement. It now comes to the committee to ratify. It's a three-year uh, contract beginning July 1st, 2019 through mm -hmm. June 30th, 2022. Um, there have been some language change and the salary in year one, it would be 2%, in year two, 1%, and in year three, 1%. So I would ask the committee to please ratify the custodial contract. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second it. Any discussion? Um, just now, who, who were the folks who on the school committee that, that was on this committee? Mary and Lori. And Lori. Yeah. Well, thank you for your work on that. Um, and just want to point out that um, the superintendent did, did make note of the, the um, raises and such, but this is a public document, and if, if anyone wants to look at it, they can feel free to ask for it. So um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Passes 5 zero, zero. Uh, Report of the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum. Good evening. Good evening. It's, it's just curriculum instruction assessment evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> strategic planning just so just in that. case how is that all <laughs> yeah it's just a bit it's a it, it's a lot but anyway let's talk about curriculum first on january 29th i met with elementary school specialists during the half day to discuss the ib primary years program ages 3 through 12. the educationally designed school building um, that specialists were actually involved in the designing of that building and we began to uh, look at writing curriculum using the approved curriculum template 
The conversation was valuable. The questions asked were challenging <coughs> and supportive. As a result of our meeting, I decided to design and share a curriculum template that all elementary teachers would consider using if approved in designing curriculum. I met again with the specialists and we're still in looking at that more closely, at that unit as a way to um, have common language for everyone to develop their units of curriculum. Teachers are working together in grades six through 10, developing units of instruction. They've been working rigorously on this effort really since 2017 and I would say we were close to 200 units that have been established through both schools, the middle school and the high school. Principals and department chairs have been meeting collectively and the many of the units that have been established are incredible. They're just amazing. So um, we're going to try to put those together. They're on Google Drive and it's quite complicated. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, Assessments, grade three through 10 are involved in MCAS testing. The testing really begins in March and continues through June. Fast assessments for grades K through five start in May and continue through the process. We have also begun to schedule our annual surveys for students grade three through 12. Teachers participate in two, one about their school and the other about their strategic and school improvement plans. And we also send a survey every year to parents. This will be our fourth year that we will receive feedback for all but the strategic planning one, and this will be our third year. The results are analyzed at the end of every school year and assist us in forming our goals for the upcoming year. The leadership team has completed 1,877 walkthrough evaluations as of April 9th, 2019. The evaluation subcommittee has met and we are currently looking to revise the 2012 addendum connected to the Unit A teacher contract as many things have changed since it was developed originally. PD is scheduled in the, in the approved calendar and we have plans in place to address the social emotional intelligence of all. We have decided to, that it's important to build capacity by increasing stakeholders social emotional intelligence we have recently been accepted to the Yale program, creating emotionally intelligent schools. Central office staff will attend July 9th through 11th, and principals and teams at each school have signed up to attend a two-day training in July. We will continue to keep you updated. We will be forming a committee in January 2020. I know it feels like a far away, but it's not that far away. Um, to look at our strategic plan, as our strategic plan will be up in five years in 2021. So we'll begin to formulate a new plan for school committee approval in December of 2020. So that we can <coughs> jump right into the new plan and have no lag time between the end of one plan and the beginning of another. Um, this plan, once approved, will, um, will give the vision for the next five years until 2026. Our current school improvement plan, like I said, ends in 2021. We would like the next plan to complement the work done thus far. Any questions? Mayor? I was just wondering, it doesn't really have to do with your report. I, it just made me think of the DESI report. Do we know when that's going to come out? I have no idea. I've looked on their... Um, in the security portal to see if it's there, and it has not oh. come up yet. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question, sorry. April? You mentioned, it was, was it a Yale? Yale University. And what, what exactly was that study or that? What do you mean? You were talking, was, I was trying course. to catch up. Yeah, what, what is the course for? Is, I'm sorry. It's called Creating Emotionally Intelligent Schools. And what does that entail for our school? It a lot, if, you, if you go and Google emotional intelligence, it will help a great deal. I've done quite a lot of research on that and I've been familiar with the different quadrants that are necessary. But basically what it helps people do is become aware of themselves, become aware of uh, and their emotions and how that affects their day-to-day -day interactions. It also helps students to be able to identify what they're feeling at that moment and gives strategies and techniques to help students and teachers, everyone, rise up and gives time. Once you identify, it allows some time to process. I think many people um, don't necessarily honor the moments and what they're feeling in those moments and sometimes can get caught up and 
in it and not really understand why they're feeling the way that they feel. And many businesses actually have done a lot of work around emotional intelligence and the things that improve are people become happier in their work, they're less apt to leave their workplace, they're, um, they're more responsive, they feel like they're having a greater impact. So I think it's time that we really dive in. There's a, the man who was responsible for making this happen originally, actually it was a researcher before this man, but Daniel Goleman out of Harvard University has done a lot of work on emotional intelligence for many years. And he, um, he's who I'm most familiar with. However, schools are not businesses. Um, they're much more complicated and the level of um, human connection every day and the diverse levels of that connection for everyone within that microcosm of school life is much more complicated than business. And so I looked further and, and more deeply to find possibly if there was a program that could help everyone in school life. And this program came to the top and just serendipitously, the person who developed the program will be speaking at the Massachusetts Principal Conference um, in July, which is a big, it's a big event. A lot, many principals attend this event. And um, I did not know he was going to speak, but the man is going to be there, and so we're ahead, which I'm very grateful about that. Um, we got in, and we were accepted to the training, and they'll be with us for a year following. Okay, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Um, just quickly, how many evaluations did you, you perform, your team perform? Hold on. 1877. Yep. 1,877, and that was uh, as of yesterday. And how many people on the team? Well, it depends on which school. Oh. So, so each school has a principal, assistant principal, and if you're at the middle and the, at middle, well, fourth, grade four through seven, you have department chairs. Yeah. And grades eight through 12 have department chairs. And then we have um, assistant principals and department chair at DECUS, and all of those individuals are evaluating. And so does it, do you have enough staff, do you think, that, that are doing these evaluations? Well, it's pretty impressive. It's, that that's what I mean, it sounds high, the, the, the number of evaluations. Yes, each, it, it is. It's extremely um, impressive. And I think what the whole idea of the evaluation is, again, about developing really good relationships between those two parties. And once that happens, there, and because the numbers at least for the most part, have come way down as far as, you know, you're not evaluating 50 people. You're evaluating 12 people. Okay. And that gives you an opportunity to be visiting them and stopping in and um, doing walkthrough evaluations and looking at their instruction and developing rapport and relationships, talking about instruction and best way, the best way to reach our students. Are you getting good feedback from the, the people being evaluated that they feel like they're being evaluated well? Yes, in the recent, I asked that question actually at the evaluation subcommittee because there have been a lot of changes over the last five years in that whole system and what we've done to narrow the disparity of having so many people to evaluate and not as many people to part participate. And they have been very happy with the relationships that they've built and they feel as though they've grown quite a bit overall and they have someone that they can go to to, to think about ideas and talk about what to do instead and how, or talk about something they've done great and share that with their colleagues. So it's overall been a really fantastic process for Wareham. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. So these are in-house self-evaluations of the administration <coughs> of a particular building with their staff, their teachers. Correct. So you have, you have at the high school, you have the principal, assistant principal, and you have five department chairs. So they're, they're doing a, an evaluation of their own teachers, their own, their own each, you yes. know, each evaluation. So there's no outside or impartial or coming in to do these evaluations. It's per school, per, per administrative team. Well, the principal actually is kind of acts as that because they're the secondary on the, so you have a primary evaluator and then you have the secondary. It might be the opposite of the language. I always mess that up, but. It's the opposite. So the, the 
evaluate the person that goes in is the department chair. They're the ones that are constantly sort of checking and in a good, and I mean that, I don't mean checking. I guess it's a better way to just collaborating, right? The principal is not the evaluator. They're sort of the overview or the evaluator of everyone. So it's not so much an evaluation as it is a seeing where they are at that point in oh, it's the curriculum? It's evaluative. It follows the state law. Well, because the way that I interpret an evaluation is, is I think, different. Like, I would interpret an evaluation as an independent outside person coming in and seeing with fresh eyes what could be changed, what needs to be changed, what's going well, what's not going well, as opposed to somebody that works immediately closely with that person that could be considered a bias? Well, it depends, because if that person has no experience teaching math or English or art or history, and they're coming in to give their opinion about how somebody's teaching that subject, then it doesn't hold any weight. That person has to have a level of expertise. Well, and, I, and I can understand that, but there could still be a level of independence within that Well, expertise. we just had the Department of Ed here for... I'm just trying days. to get clarification on how it works, because to me, the word evaluation, I, like I said, I think is something different than what this is. But we just had a comprehensive district review from the state, and that report that Mary was asking about earlier, that was outside. Okay. So there are many checks and balances in public education. Um, so that's how we keep checks and balances day to day. But we are um, obliged through the systems that are put in place to follow certain protocols. We have to. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand it better. Yep, that's all. No Thank problem. You. And I guess to, to Ms. Rossi's point, just to, it popped into my head this question in the past. Are the evaluators peers or are they sort of administrators? The department chairs. Right, so they, they would be administrators, right? Not in our contract. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Um, so, then you're, you're complete, Dr. Schwamm? I am. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, report of the superintendent. Okay, thank you. Uh, along with the bill and payroll warrants, I would like to add payroll April 6th in the amount of $148,737.32 and the bill warrant on 418 in the amount of 556400 $66.97. I would also note that this amount includes $476,599 in the Minot Capital Plan. I would ask the committee to please approve the bill warrants and payroll. Um, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second it. Any d discussion? Uh, Minor capital plan, is that part of the, uh, it's, it's the new school? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. thank God. <laughs> All right, um, so um, vote to approve. I mean, those in favor, right, those, the, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, opposed, abstentions, five zero zero. I, I also would like to share uh, with the public that when we look at the Minot Capital Building um, <clears throat> bills that we're paying there's a process and there are several people that they go through before it's approved they're first checked out by our project manager who then sends them to our business manager the there is a group from the building uh, committee that will review the bills they need to approve or disapprove and then once that happens I'm notified I sign off I send it to the chair the chair signs and that's when we submit so there's a number of eyes on the bills as we're moving into this project um, next week we will be looking for bid opening at the bid opening will include the abatement of the building as well as the demolition we expect to hand over the building sometime the middle of May where that work will, be, will begin. And once we hand it over, we will not be allowed in it any longer because of the abatement. In June, July, there'll be another uh, bid and that will be for site preparation. And that will start sometime in late fall. 
So that's kind of the progress. You know, we've been meeting almost on a daily basis with different groups, looking at colors, looking at configurations, um, and we'll be updating the community. We're going to be meeting the teachers on, I believe it's May 8th, to go over where we're at, to show them some of our color schemes, to show them the inside of the buildings, and it's, it's really coming to life, so we're quite excited. I would urge the public um, to please go to the website because we put all current plans up on the website and we keep it updated on a very regular basis so you're, you're informed. Um, with our progress, we will, you know, and we'll certainly have some meetings for the public so they can be updated and see the plans. Just for everyone's information, this week is assistant principal week, so please thank your assistant principal for the hard work that they do on a daily basis. I'm very happy to announce, um, with the help of Ms. Rossi, we're going to be having some focus groups. Our first focus group will be looking at school choice. Why are people leaving? We're hoping that people will come and share some information with us. And I understand that she's a, a guru in social media, so she's going to be helping us with that and getting the word out. So we'll be sharing with you when it will be. And we would really urge you to come because we're trying to um, do the very best job that we can and we really need your help and your input. We also will be sharing information on a regular basis, so if you have something that you would like us to talk about, please let me know and we'd be happy to have a focus group and discuss that information. Uh, our, pre our kindergarten numbers continue to grow and I'm not going to let Mrs. Ansel uh, play in the guess of how many because she tells me she thinks we could have over 227 oh students and I'm telling her I'm not wow. gonna let her play. Wow. Yeah, so, um, and we've had several school choice students apply for kindergarten and right now we still do have some open seats in kindergarten but we're going to be closing that very quickly if we continue the enrollment. And in and, and, and all things, you know, if, if if all things work as planned, though, though, mine will be ready for those kids. Yes, yeah, that that'll exciting. be that'll be awesome. So, thank you. And thank you. Um, just uh, the the I was curious the school choice focus group. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that something that you're going to organize? Well, I'm going to have help. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's it's is it a superintendent thing? So this is something that I actually brought to um, Dr. Shaverhood this week. Um, after having discussed how during my campaign I had sent out some information or requesting information from people who had school choice um, and you know either didn't receive communication or finding out and having people reach out to me individually on their reasons um, so I thought that having a in a group of ourselves where we can bring parents who have school choice, teachers who have even school choice their families, um, people who have a um, possible misconception about what Wareham Public Schools are like to come and sit down with us and tell us point blank what their, what their issue is, where their reservations lie and what, what their suggestions may be to help us not only fix the perception because as we know with all the presentations like we had with the student ambassadors, all the presentations we've had, you know, our fantastic high school lip dub that went out today, um, there are so many great things about our schools but perception is, is tainted for whatever reason it is for a lot of people and in order to change that, I think we need to address it openly and transparently and figure out a solution coming from those parents that felt that their needs were met <coughs> elsewhere so that we can bridge that gap and try to close it and, and limit the number of kids that are leaving our district for similar districts to ourselves. Yeah. Good, good for you, hitting the ground running. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, report of the school committee, recommendations of policy review committee. First <coughs> one is student activity accounts. I was not there, so I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm deferring to you. <laughs> okay. So we there are three policies. Where is Susan? Do you want to come up and help? Okay. So there were three policies in our packet. Um, one of them 
was proposed earlier and is not currently being proposed. That was the first one. Okay. The third one is the current. The student activity? Yes, this is the current policy. So the one in the middle, number two, is the one that's being no. proposed now. I can't see that far. No. But it says April 1st, 2019 on the back. The last page says April 1st, 2019. So that's the policy that's being proposed now. So if you want to refer to that one. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, the, on, the only addition to the student activity policy was the, um, the, as business manager, I'd like to have some more oversight. I have no oversight of the student activity accounts right now. Um, we do have people within each school, and they send their reconciliations to me monthly. Um, but I want, I want to be more proactive and see the checks before they go out. So we added just one sentence that says, before a check can be written, the business office has to sign off on the and the approval. So that's really the only thing we added. And so at our meeting, um, there was a lot of participation from Mrs. Chandler and Mrs. Cote. So I just want to be sure that this is the policy, this, the, this policy contains all that we discussed at the meeting. Yes. Right? Okay. Okay. All right. The changes. Okay. Um, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All right. So. Anyone? All right. So, so you said there's only one change, but I, I thought the changes were in yellow. That's not. That's what I'm. Yeah. I'm not sure we're looking at the same doc. I just want to be sure. Because I, I, I asked you in an email, and you mentioned. Yeah, I did. You, yeah, you I mentioned did. the yellow. So, so he's right. There are many highlighted. Which are removals. What? Um, I don't think so because this talks about the VADAR system and that was never in the old policy. Yeah, and, and, and of the three documents, okay, you can pass it of the three documents, I, 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 saw, I saw this and I was like happy because it seemed to really condense a lot of yes. the other ones. Yeah, so there was a lot of work done to make So there's a lot more than just like, you know, having the business manager take a peek first or something. So this, this is not, the original, the original. That's, that's, that's the one that we, as a group, edited, we took your policy that you had created and edited that as a group. That's the result of oh. those edits. And the yellow's coming off. Correct. It. The yellow's coming off? The yellow's coming off. Mm. So it was number 13 in yellow? I don't have a clock. Okay. Okay. That was an addition. Right. So the original proposal was to try to get the student activities to run through the accounting system. <laughs> And the policy subcommittee didn't didn't think that that was in best best interest of the students to, to for the money to flow quick enough. So we removed that suggestion. So number thirteen says when funds are requested from the student activity account to the principal, we'll seek approval. We'll from seek the approval from the business manager prior to writing the check. Correct. I didn't think that that was agreed to. Yep. That was the only piece we. We changed the mess. We added. Oh, okay. Well, so we added that it goes one piece. To you, so it'll be faxed to you or, or emailed to they you. Can email they can email it, scan it, and send it right back to right. them. Okay. We talked about a lot at that meeting, so I just want to make sure that the changes that we talked about were correct. So, so I'm like, like really confused because I kind of liked it uh, as I read it. I thought the yellow was like added, and I it, it, it seemed to put all kinds of really good checks and balances in there for the treasurer and everything. But it no. does, it would, but I think the feeling was that it would restrict up too much. Oh, because the system takes so long mm -hmm. to turn right. around that you can't effectively <coughs> get to the students when you need right. to get to the students, mm. and things come up and they happen. That was what the principals had noted at the. Correct. during the policy subcommittee their concerns and their right to be concerned because the turnaround time can be weeks there's generally about a three-week period from when you submit a request to when you would receive the check part of the concern would be there are times that schools need to have a check issued such as uh, the prom hmm. they might not know what the amount is and if we wait three weeks we're going to lose the site. Mm -hmm. We do know that we're going to be reviewing the policy and we'll continue to review the mm -hmm. policy um, just because student accounts is a high <coughs> profile um, account, but we need to be able to accommodate the needs of our school and of our students, and we just can't put that type of restriction on 
right now. All right. Mm -hmm. And it's true that the business office is now doing the accounting for those accounts and reconciling and yes and and this will add another layer that's not there now okay. um, having the approval come through. correct do you do you mind if we table it I just want to read digest it because this it's not what I thought it was that's all okay um, no we can table it we just would like to get this in place for July 1 so if you don't mind we'll put it on another meeting yeah the next May. meeting well, so if we can put it on the next one because we have another policy to discuss that yeah. night also okay all right so um, so April 25th so so Ms. Ruiz do I just make a motion to table or do, do, do the seconders and approvers have to agree and All right, so, no. <laughs> All right, so, so can I have the, the, the motioner and seconder withdraw if they don't I mind? withdraw my, my approval of your motion. <laughs> okay, um, and was Ms. Morgan the other no, one? Did I second? Oh, that's right. So I withdraw my second. All right, so now I move to table this, the vote on the student accounts policy, student activity accounts policy until April 25th, is that right? Yeah, April, 20, April 25th. Uh, any further discussion? Well, he said he moved it, but oh, I just said okay. he can't move as chair. Yeah. You can recommend. <laughs> yeah. So, so <laughs> April. I know April it. did, <laughs> and then I seconded. Right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. And so, uh, any further discussion? All right. All those approved? I mean, all those uh, um, support? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Passes 5 0 0. Thank you. Thank you. And the next one is facilities governing use of. Okay, so this one, you had two copies. One showed the changes in the margins, and the other one was the clean new policy, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this one had a lot of work done to it. Um, Thank you to Michelle. I believe she's the one that reworked this form. If you look at the old one, there were all kinds of forms and charges and room charges and electricity charges. And so she really condensed it into this new form um, that's a lot more efficient. That's the biggest change in the policy. Sorry. So the new form is this? Yes. This is as somebody who is a former uh, cheer coach who's had to use the building use forms for requesting practice this would have made life so much easier so many years ago um, I shouldn't say it's the only change there are some changes to the fees um, and then the whole harmless agreement I believe was just brought up to date um, to the district I do have questions on um, order of priority for people looking for building use uh, for the obviously I know obviously the school events get first priority all of the you know Wareham Public Schools facilities but then is it in order by date is it in order by you know schools discretion how else are they just for outside organizations to better understand where they need to get their information in is it, is it on a first come first serve basis is it on a prioritized basis like this sport takes precedence during the season so even if you're requesting it for something else you, you get kind of next in line or is it absolute first come first serve and it, is it at the discretion of each principal or is it go through administration like where does that like just for clarification for anybody who's looking to utilize the facilities so it does it does go through administration um, and it is other than you know immediate school um, activities it's a first come first serve basis so if someone's reserved it ahead of time um, they, they get the use and do they have a cutoff of how far in advance they can reserve or do they you know like say if they say they know that something's happening in the winter or in the fall or in the spring you know what I mean do they know when their start date is for that particular um, sport or event or what have you would they have you know you have to have this in within six months within five months or can they book it no that's why I'm asking I just wasn't sure if there was something 
right. but we would stay in the school year so somebody couldn't come in and say well I'm going to reserve it, this for the next 10 years no I, I mean no not for 10 obviously like yeah. with expiration but within <laughs> so say if it was like a six month say it was like mm -hmm. you know the end of school year June but the fall events are starting to look in, or then, you know, in the fall or in August, the winter events are starting to look in. I didn't know if there was a, how soon can they, you know, look into filling out the form if there was any criteria for that, and if not, is that something that should be looked at or added? We certainly can consider it at the, ne I mean, at the next policy meeting. And, and part of the reason that I ask, obviously, is I've been in that position mm -hmm. where I've, in previous rules had looked for, you know, building use and had put in was told you, you can't by this date. It's not ready. You're not ready. And then you put in and it's like, oh well, this takes precedence over that. And it was, you know, whether whether or not it was date. So some things were kind of muddled and unclear. So I think going forward for other outside organizations to want to use utilize the facilities, which are normally housing our own students, I think that having it be more black and white. I think would alleviate a lot of tension and confusion with some of the outside organizations and helping to keep it in, especially if they're, if we're charging fees to those organizations to utilize the facilities, you know, that's, that's income generating. So any money is good thing, right? When I'm bringing it in. So I think otherwise they're forced to look to outside um, sources to, to host these events. And I think it might just alleviate some of the the clutter if that's something that's possible. So correct me if I'm wrong, someone, but that would be more of a procedure than a policy? Yeah. Is that true? So that's maybe not something that we need to add to the policy, okay. but something that can be developed to go along with it as a procedure, because it might be different at different schools. Yeah, like I said, it was just, different I'm just facilities. still figuring out how what's under it, but I know that by using the building use form, if there is a criteria of you know how it's being used or dates or you know, deadlines, then it might make it a little bit clearer for those trying to use it. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yep. But I, I don't think that would stop us from approving the policy. I just think that's something maybe we can. Right. So I mean, like an addendum to the procedure like, as opposed to. Yeah, it's more of a procedure, I think. Okay. Because we, you. I mean, we do get requests six, eight months in advance coming through. Yeah, and well, with the expansion of a year, yeah, how long has this been? The expansions of all that, you know, the AAU teams and the travel teams and things, kind of, you know, different competition teams and things like that. I just, you know, just making sure that everybody knows the the, the right steps so that it's not causing any sort of like, you know, conflict or feelings of favoritism for other people and organizations. I think just going forward, it just will make everything kind of appear more fair. Not that it hasn't been fair, but you know, from outside perspective, kind of if everything's much more black and white, I think it would definitely alleviate a lot of tension. Understood. Uh, Ms. Ruiz, do we, do we have a motion? No. Okay, uh, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second? Second. Um, any further discussion? Um, Lori? No? All right. Um, I just had a couple questions and comments. I was, I just thought it was interesting on, on item number two, and it mentions you know activities which may cause, activities which may cause personal injury or damage to the school building and grounds will be will not be allowed. You know, but you know, you can get injured doing anything that, like baseball, you know. But uh, archery was listed. I thought that was interesting because. We, we, I didn't know we actually do archery, you know, but, I, but I, I could see the point of maybe not having the general public, you know, perform archery on our fields and grounds. <laughs> so so I, 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 um, I saw Mr. Wilger out there with a class one time. I was like, I didn't even know we did that. Um, and then number five, it mentions um, all organizations or individuals must pay a rental fee for the use of the buildings unless the superintendent or designee waive the fee. Do we waive the fee for anyone now? Right, but, but I'm just saying, like right now, are, are we waiving the fees for anybody? Category one. Yes. Oh, 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 the, 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 not, not beyond category one, the, just, just category. So, so we didn't, in other words, you could, you could at your discretion go to category two through four and, you know, waive the fee if you wanted to. I, I could, but yeah. I don't think that would happen. No, right, okay, that's, 
it was a given the category one it's, it says right in there that it's there's no fee but okay I didn't know if, if anyone else was I just wonder if anyone else was not paying <laughs> All right uh, so I'm good with this and uh, and yeah no, I know I like how it was condensed and I, and and I was trying to make sense of the old one and this is much much better mm -hmm. yeah it was oh. really good so um, without any further discussion all those uh, who approve Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Abstentions? It's five zero zero. Okay, so we're still on uh, report of the school committee, and uh, and I know it's not on here, but um, I know Miss Bakayaki, you attended that building committee. Do you want to offer anything? I do actually have a list too. Okay. <laughs> um, so yes, I did attend uh, the meeting today with the MSBA, the architects, and the project manager. Dr. Schwamm and I were both there. Um, it was just to update the MSBA on uh, where the project is, and I think it went really well. It was very positive. They were very happy with what they heard. Um, I think it's just going forward in a, in a very positive way. And everything's on track? It is. Okay. It is, yeah, I believe so. Um, and I know that it's been shared at other meetings um, in town that the town's bond rating has just gone up, which has caused the interest rate to go down. And they project that the taxpayers will see a savings of at least $1 million when it gets to the end. Um, well, that's awesome. Yeah, as far as, as what the um, payments will be. So we were worried about interest rates going up given the Fed, but our bond rating has improved, which brought it down. Which brought the interest rate down. That's great. Mm -hmm. by, by a great deal, I believe, yes. Um, and also at the meeting this week, uh, there was a vote to, on the opening date of the school. So the school will open in December of 2021. All right, and so perhaps Dr. Shaver Hood, can you describe how that would work? Because I know we've discussed that briefly if it happened to open mid-year. Mm -hmm. well, there were several reasons why we chose to um, open it mid-year. The first one was financial. There are a number of schools that are going out for bid right now and the we were advised by the project manor, manager and the architects that we would get a better bid if we would delay the opening um, just due to the number of people building so we took that into consideration and as well <coughs> when we were looking at um, opening we know we're going to be bringing two schools together and that's going to take some coordination. And if we would open during the first day of school, Excuse. we're going to be bringing people in who have never been into the school or have been into the school for just touring. We also would like the teachers to have some time to go in to set up their classrooms. So when we move in, it's a seamless transition. And if we do it in the middle, in December or January, um, we would have that availability because we would be able to cover classes for teachers to send them over to work in their rooms to get everything ready. But more importantly, we'll be able to bring students over to their new building to tour, to learn where to go because it's going to, it's a large complex. And so we want everyone to feel as comfortable as possible on day one. And we felt if we had lead time and had that availability where the students are with us, the teachers are with us, our transition would be so much smoother. Coupled with the fact of the tremendous savings of um, money and the fact that we would probably get some companies to bid that normally would not bid because of the number of projects. We just felt like that was in the best interest of our students and our community. So that's why the decision was made. I'd also just like to note that um, the project manager did note at the meeting today um, how, how much cooperation there's been throughout the town town departments, um, I was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago, fire department, police department. Um, he noted, you know, in a very positive way that there's been a lot of cooperation between town departments on this project. Yeah, that's a big deal. Which I'm sure maybe this, doesn't always happen, I don't know, yeah. I mean, it's what we expect. So, yeah, yeah, let's bring people together, it's a lot of excitement. It is, it is, yeah. yes. The architects are very excited about the design and uh, it's become uh, quite a topic of conversation for external people as well. Um, it's 
quite dynamic and high quality, low cost compared to many other schools that are happening now. We're in the lower end, but we've developed something that is quite amazing. I, I mean, I'm really surprised, but it's a model school for a number of reasons, at least in design at the moment. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Um, not on the school, but I do have. Um, uh, under, under school committee reports. Okay, I sure. believe so, yeah. yeah. So about a month ago now, uh, Mary and I actually met with Susan Gifford about the budget. Um, there was a vote or some hearings coming up um, in the legislature around the budget, so we met with her. I thought that went really well. She was very um, open to what we had to say. Um, you know, it's a fight that she's been fighting for many years, and uh, I, thought, I thought that it went really well. And I just appreciate the fact that she met with us and um, also, I think we all got a, an email from Senator Pacheco that there would be an education forum going on at Bridgewater State. Unfortunately, it's the same night as town meeting. Oh. So, yeah, I emailed him back and said that's really bad timing. <laughs> um, so I guess we won't be able to attend that. Um, and then the last thing I had was, well, a couple things about, first is about town meeting. So as you know, we have a project uh, article that the CPC has put forward at town meeting um, for the track, and we'll be looking for support at that at town meeting. Um, so that's April 22nd at 7 o'clock. So everyone come and vote for the track. Um, you know, a lot of work has gone into that. There was a lot of back and forth with the CPC, and we really appreciate the effort on their part to have a discussion, work out, an, you know, an agreeable um, article to put forward to town meeting. And so I'm just looking forward to lots of support for that so that we can move forward with that project. Um, the other thing, I did have a discussion with the chair of the Finance Committee, and um, one thing that I was always interested in seeing is the budget at Upper Cape. Not in a negative way, I just wanted to see what the budget was. And so I asked him to let me know when that presentation would be happening. And unfortunately, it happened without any notice. Um, and so, I wasn't able to be there. I wasn't able to share with any of the other committee members that that would be happening. And so, sadly, we did not have an opportunity to attend that meeting. So hopefully going forward, that communication will be a little bit better. So are you saying this is the meeting of Upper Cape before the FinCom? Yes. And, and it happened with no notice. That would have been on the FinCom too? Well, it is on their agenda to discuss spring town meeting warrants yeah. uh, articles. Yeah. Uh, but I had asked for advance notice of yeah. when that presentation sure. would happen. This was a few weeks ago. Um, and then I got notice that it did happen unexpectedly, that the superintendent came and gave his presentation. Right. So uh, it, it should be on WCTV or YouTube or something, I hope. Yeah, you're right. It but but it there. would be nice to have attended yes. if you wanted to attend. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, and that's all I have. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, any so on to any other business? Anyone? Nothing, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, so, motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Oh, second. Sorry. <laughs> That's all right. All those, pro all those been fighting this. So moved and second all, all night. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero.